Hi, everyone. My name is Dominic, and I'm a current fourth year medical student at IU School of Medicine. In this presentation, we will be talking about ocular ultrasound, specifically the approach, setup, relevant pathology, as well as a modified approach to the swinging flashlight test to assess pupillary function. Here's a list of some objectives for this video. We'll review some indications for ocular ultrasound in the clinic or emergency department, and also run through the steps of how to set things up at the bedside. Regarding indications, ultrasound can be used quite effectively to assess intracranial pressure by measuring the optic nerve, as well as for obtaining a global image of the eye, such as in settings of suspected retinal detachment, vitreous hemorrhage, intraocular foreign body, or in the case of an open globe. So how do we actually go about scanning? First, we'll need a high-frequency probe, ideally a linear probe. For this approach, we can use as much gel as possible in order to avoid unnecessary pressure on the eye. If available, you can also place a tegaderm over the patient's eye to minimize any irritation. However, the gel can be placed directly onto a closed eyelid. For positioning, have the patient lie supine with their eyes closed and begin with the probe placed directly on the patient's eyelid, being mindful of how much pressure you're exerting. Starting our exam, we've instructed the patient to look directly ahead and close his eyes. Using our linear probe, we can apply some gel to the eyelid and start scanning. On initial assessment, we're able to visualize the eye as an anechoic sphere in the center of the screen with noticeable posterior acoustic enhancement. We've instructed our patient to look up and down as well as right and left. While scanning, pay attention to the lens, posterior chamber, and outer margins of the globe. In this case, our patient has a perfectly normal eye with full range of motion. In the real world, however, your patient could very well have an underlying pathology that will show up during your ultrasound. This graphic from Wikiem is the best chart I could find that summarizes what certain pathologies will appear like while scanning. Based on your patient's chief concern, as well as relevant physical exam findings, mixing in diagnostic ultrasound is a great way of strengthening your differential. Along with ocular pathology, we can also assess intracranial pressure, or ICP, by measuring the optic nerve sheath diameter. Our target is 3 millimeters behind the eye, with a normal measurement being less than 5 millimeters. This image from our healthy patient shows an anechoic eye with a vertical blue line measuring exactly 3 millimeters deep into the nerve sheath. The horizontal line shows us the nerve sheath diameter, which in this case is less than 5 millimeters. Based on these data, our patient likely has normal ICP. In addition to a focused ocular workup, we can also use ultrasound to help supplement our neurologic exam. Take for example this patient. After three rounds in the octagon, he's developed some impressive swelling around his right eye that would normally prohibit us from assessing his pupillary function. Using ultrasound, however, we can modify and work through the swinging flashlight test. We'll start with the same setup as described earlier. However, this time our probe will be positioned at an acute angle to the patient's eye. Using a shallower depth, we can visualize the pupil and surrounding constrictor muscles. Shining a light into the unaffected eye, we can observe as the muscle contracts in response, demonstrating an appropriate reflex. Zooming in, we can better visualize the constrictor muscles, posterior aspect of the lens, eyelid, and also the pupil. To summarize, in this video, we've covered indications for ocular ultrasound, the setup and protocol, a summary of commonly encountered pathologies, as well as a unique approach to a pupillary exam in a complex patient. This concludes a brief summary of ocular ultrasound. Included are the sources used in this presentation, as well as links to further reading. Thank you.